Hey guys, I'm Siddharth Rajmohan and I'm a faculty of drums at the Goa Jazz Academy. This is the first video lesson in a series of video lessons dedicated to all things hi-hat. Now in this series, we're going to be looking at what the hi-hat does, how to use them efficiently, what the hi-hat techniques we can use. We are also going to be picking up our songs by the masters and see how they have done it and so on and so forth. Now, if you've been playing drums for a while, you know a couple of beats and you don't know what to do with them, maybe this place is a good start. Let's dig in and have some fun. Before we get into this lesson, let's try and understand what the hi-hat does. Let's see what the function of a hi-hat is in a drum set. Now the drum set consists of three important parts. The bass drum, the snare drum and the hi-hat. The bass drum and the snare drum comes under the drum part of the drum set and the hi-hat comes under the cymbal part of the drum set. As a drummer, the, drums, the bass drum and the snare drum is used to produce information. Now this information is free, it does not have a form, character or context. Now when the hi-hat is introduced, it filters this drum beat into a particular form, gives it some kind of character and puts it in some context so that it's understandable and comprehensible. Let's take a simple beat, put it through some hi-hat variations and see what the result is. In the last example, we can observe that the bass drum and snare drum pretty much played the same thing throughout, while the hi-hats were variating. Now in this process, it was also giving a new context to the same drum beat that exists. And by this logic, the same beat that could exist in a metal song can suddenly exist in a jazz tune. All it does, all it needs, is a simple change, a simple variation in the hi-hats and probably some dynamics. Now let's see what happens when we put this whole thing in a musical setting. Let's take a simple drum beat, a simple bass line. Let's try and play things through. And while we maintain the same beat, we'll try and variate the hi-hats to see what kind of effect it produces to the music. Thank you. 
In the last example, we actually saw what the hi-hat really does to a piece of music. Sometimes the same piece sounded fast, sometimes it sounded slow, sometimes it sounded jumpy, and sometimes it sounded like it had some zing and a pep. All this while, the bass drum and snare drum were playing the same thing. So the hi-hat, every time it variated, gave you a new perspective of how you can see the drum beat or how you can view a particular tune. In the next series of videos, we are going to be dealing with a lot more of similar things, except we are going to be dealing with some exercises. We are going to try and see what different kinds of techniques we can use, what different kinds of vocabulary we can use to enhance our own playing. In the videos that are coming up, we are going to be dealing with a lot of stuff relating to the hi-hats. We are going to have new faculty discussing different ways of using it and their own methods of using it. We are also going to be delving deep into this subject. If you think there is someone you know who needs to listen to this or who needs to see this series of videos, please share this video or refer this video to them. And if you like the content, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.